we are going to go first of all to second kings second kings chapter 15 we'll go to other places in scripture too but we're going to look at this king one of the one of the good kings of the southern kingdom of judah there were good kings and bad kings in judah in israel the northern kingdom remember there were all bad kings uh, most of them all of them turned from the lord at some point to uh, uh go after false gods and it started with the very first king of israel jeroboam and his uh his desire was for the people to follow him not to follow uh david's family down in jerusalem so uh, he he made up his own way of worshiping and got the people to follow that but that's not what this king did. This king we're going to see, his, his name, as we look at Second Kings, his name is Azariah. Not a very uh, uh, common name. You can, you can probably, I could say, hey, give me a name of, uh, one name of the a king uh, of Judah. And you'd probably say David, first of all. You might say Solomon, uh, the famous ones. And then later on, you might say Josiah or somebody. But Azariah is not uh, very common but this is Azariah and I want us to see him and uh, in a sense compare him to our, our lives compare his life with ours you <clears throat> know we can't do it as a as a king but uh, as the Bible tells us he's a he was a, a good king by telling us that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord look what it, it says we're just going to read verses 1 through 7 because in the book of Second Kings, that's all we hear of him, okay? So I'm just going to read verses 1 through 7. In the 20 and 7th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, began Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right, in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done, save that the high places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burnt incense still on the high places. And the Lord smote the king so that he was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house. And Jotham, the king's son, was over the house, judging the people of the land. And the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Jotham his son reigned in his stead. Um, what, <clears throat> what it says here about Azariah uh, and being a good king, it tells us that, well, <laughs> I mean, quickly, how old was he when he died? Did anybody pay attention to that? 68. 68, it's almost 69, but he was 16 when he became king. 16 year old, years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned two and 50 years. So you add those two together, and you get 68. He is my age, and he died. But he had leprosy. It says that he, was, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but then it also says the Lord smote him with leprosy. And we know that, that uh, good... Christian people die from all kinds of things, and they'll get cancer. They'll be they'll die in wrecks and things like that. Uh, we don't know their lives, but sometimes it's just a matter of God's plan. God works it out. But Azariah here, as we see him, uh, he didn't he he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But God smote him with leprosy, and in his case, there was a reason for it. And you read this, and, and you don't see that there. You don't see any reason why God smote him with leprosy. Well, the thing is, there's more about this man. And um, we find that in the book of Second Chronicles. In Second Chronicles, he is called Uzziah. Now, the reason, uh, there are different reasons why uh, the translators did this. I, it, it's possible that in Second Chronicles... Uh, he's called Uzziah. This is still the same king, and you'll see that the same parents and same uh, uh, son. 
same names, but his name is called Uzziah in Second Chronicles. Because, and I say possibly because there's more to the life. And at his time of being king, the high priest was named Azariah. And so if you say Azariah was king and Azariah was high priest, now we get a little bit confused. Was Hazariah the king or the high priest? Well, he's the high priest, so they use the other name, Uzziah, in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And we read again of um, Uzziah. Uzziah or Azariah. Verse number, let's start at verse number one. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. So 16 years, Amaziah, same king. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his fathers. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did, and he sought the uh, sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. So when you look at this this king, he becomes king at the age of sixteen years old, and we don't have any sixteen years old in here. Year olds. Uh, <laughs> what do sixteen year olds know? <laughs> I saw this cartoon and the guy, uh, I think this was, oh, it must have been a cartoon from a newspaper quite a while back, 1970 or something. And uh, it was somebody door to door selling encyclopedias. And the man at the door is standing, standing there with the door open. He says, no, I don't need any encyclopedias. I have an 18 year old and he knows everything. So uh, 16 year old kids don't know everything. They just think they do. Okay. But here, this king, he, he becomes the king, and he is a good king. How many of you know the story of, I, I believe it was Josiah? No. It might have been uh, Joash. When, when uh, can't think of the names right now, but he, was, he became king when he was five years old. He, uh, and he, he listened, or the high priest took care of him. The high priest's uh, wife was uh, this king's aunt, and they watched over him. The, his grandmother killed all of the all of his uncles and aunts. Um, my, my, my mind's my, it's going. Okay, just bear with me. Um, it was the it was the woman who became the only queen. Uh, she was queen, made herself queen of uh, um, Judah. And uh, the Bible says that as long as the high priest was alive, the king did right. And so the high priest was a mentor to the young king. That's kind of what I see here in Zechariah. This Zechariah is not the Zechariah of the, of the book of Zechariah. Uh, this was a long time earlier. And uh, it says here, that he sought God in the days of Zechariah. That's, uh, that's Uzziah or Azariah. He sought God as long as Zechariah was around. And, um, and as long as he sought God, it says God made him to prosper. So he was doing the Lord's will. He was living the way God wanted. And uh, you see that his spiritual condition was, a, was one of, of following the Lord. And as long as he did, everything was okay. God was pleased with how he lived. But look at the end, uh, look at verse number five again. As long as he sought the Lord. And that that makes a difference. There's more to it than, than as long as he sought the Lord. If it says that, what does that kind of tell you about later on? Maybe he stopped. Okay, and for, for, for our purposes tonight, I believe he stopped, but it was just for a while. It wasn't like he stopped and turned away from God, because God wouldn't leave this in here. 
to say he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Look how God made him to prosper. Let's go on to verse number six. Um, I'm sorry, verse number eight. No, I better, better, verse number six. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and break down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabney and the wall of Ashdod and built cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. And God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gerbael and the Mehumnims. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. And digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains. Husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men that went out to war by bands according to the number of their account by the hand of Jael, the scribe, and Maaseiah, the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. So you see. God is helping him to prosper. God is using him. He is building up and fortifying the, the, the nation uh, against all of the enemies of God. And, and you see, God is working in that man's life, doing, uh, helping him to stand up for God and protect the people of, of Israel or Judah. The problem with what he did, not so much that he... Um, he did those things, but compare him with Solomon. Now, it doesn't say he got 700 or 1,000 wives, but he prospered. And the, 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 the wealth that he was able to accumulate grew. And that's a good thing, but we, even we, have to be careful. I want you to see what the Bible says about Wealth. Go over to the book of Deuteronomy. Some people misuse this and uh, talk about becoming rich. And that's not what it's saying. That's not what God is talking about. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 11. Now, he's, he's dealing with the, the children of Israel, all of the children of Israel, as they come out of Egypt and go in, or eventually going into the pros, uh, promised land. And God tells them, listen, beware. You know what the word beware means? Watch. Be aware. Watch, like we looked at this morning. Uh, verse number 11. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to start there. Go, go back to verse 7. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive, oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God, for the good land which he hath given thee. Now I'm going to stop for a second. Just think about that. This is They're going into this land and he, he's telling them this is all of these things are there. They're not having to plant anything. They have the wheat's there, the barley's there. Everything's growing. They have olive trees already planted. And all they're doing is going to get rid of the people. And they'll just make use of the land. And it's God's land. He says, it's my land. I take care of it. Brings the first rain and the latter rain. And uh, he's been taking care of that land, uh, letting these wicked people live there. Now he's bringing his people in to take over the land. And he says, this is what I'm giving you. And wow, can you imagine uh, that God just gives it to them? And of course, they have to fight for it, too. But now look at what he says in verse 11. Beware, be aware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Beware, don't forget me, that he says to them, in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest 
When thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. Now, he's saying, don't forget me. Don't forget God who did all of these things for you. As the, as, as, and this is what people do today. We prosper we live in this, this great land of the United States of America, and we prosper. But you know why? Because this is what, I, what I've, I haven't seen it per, firsthand, but I've seen when you look through history, why this land is going downhill. They're taking God out of everything because they're being, they're prospering. I've done this. I've done that. Uh, I've worked for this, and this is mine. And they're building themselves up instead of looking to God and saying, God has provided. Look at verse number 17. And thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. I, I just closed it. <laughs> verse number, um, I know it's the next verse. I, I'm pretty sure it's the next verse that I wanted to read. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. See, it's God. It is he that giveth thee power or the ability to get wealth. And it's not so much wealth. And that using that verse to say, see, God wants you to be rich. Because they take the word wealth and, and say, say that means to be rich. He's going to make you rich. No, it's just saying he's, give, he's the one who gives you the ability to gain money. He's the one who gives you the ability to take care of yourself, to take care of your family. God gives us the ability to walk. God gives us the ability to grab things with our hands. We've always got to give God the glory. And so King Uzziah here, as long as he prospered, as long as he followed God and did as God wanted, God made him to prosper. And remember, it's God who made him prosper. He didn't make himself prosper. But he came to a point where it seemed like he thought he made himself to prosper. I'm just going to mention, we know we've looked at Daniel chapter 4. Who was it? Nebuchadnezzar who thought he looked at everything he did, and man, he was on top of the world to himself. He thought, this is what I've done, and great me, right? God just took him and knocked him down for seven years until he figured out, you know, you know God did it. God helped me. God, God doesn't just help uh, godly people. Look over at Isaiah chapter 10. As we, I said, God has given us the ability to walk and the ability to pick up things in our hands. And so that's just the things that the world can do. Unsaved people can do. And so God helps the unsaved people. Who has, uh, I, can, I, can't, I can think of one. I always use him because he's the only one I think of, so I'm not going to say his name. Anybody know of any rich person? I mean, a, a very wealthy person. Uh, besides Trump, Gates. who? Gates. Well, yeah, Gates is the one I'm always thinking of. Is there any other rich person? Yeah. Probably the the guy in Saudi Arabia, right? The oil wealth. Who helped him get his oil? Who put the oil in the ground? Right? It's God. Still, look at Isaiah chapter ten and verse number twelve. Wherefore, it shall come to pass 
that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, by the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent. And I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures. And I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. So he says, I, I've done this. The king of, uh, what, what was he saying, Assyria? Again, it's God gave it to him. God helped him. Uzziah took it upon himself to think that he has done all of these things. Uh, look down at, back in Second Chronicles chapter 26. And look at... Uh, We'll start at verse 14. We stop there. And Uzziah prepared for them, his army, prepared for them throughout all the host, shields and spears and helmets and habergeons and bows and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines. Now, not, not car engines, okay, but uh, mechanical devices invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped. Who helped him? God, till he was strong. So God helped him get all of this power and all of this greatness. Helped him in his mind to invent these engines, these things that shot arrows and, and uh, cast stones. Catapults probably, things like that. And now he's there and he says, I'm somebody. Verse number 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Okay, so when his heart, when, when he was strong, his heart was lifted up. Have you ever met somebody who has accomplished a lot in his life and he's got a big swelled head? Now, he, not literally swollen, but he thinks he's somebody because he's he's gotten something in life he made something of himself instead of giving god the glory uzziah said i'm able to do anything now he did all of these things in in his position as king which was okay to do but look what he does he goes farther in a in a realm that doesn't belong to him verse number um, 16 when he was strong his heart was lifted up to his destruction for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense what was wrong with that do you come to church and worship yeah is it okay for him to go into the temple and worship yes but it wasn't his place to burn incense. Whose place was that? The priest. And so there, here's where we see Azariah, verse 14, 17. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him four score priests of the Lord that were valiant men. Wow, how many priests? The four score is um, 80. 20 is a score, so 80 priests go in after him. Now he's the king. And what can the king do to anybody he wants to, when he wants to? Off with your head. He was the king. But he didn't do that, and I believe he didn't do it because of what happened. Look at, now he, he's, he's going into, in, into a place that does not belong to him. It's not his position to be burning incense or sacrificing animals. Remember Saul? Saul uh, sacrificed to God uh, without Samuel and it wasn't his place to do that and so this is what Uzziah is doing and they and they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him it appertaineth not unto the Uzziah to burn incense unto the Lord but to the priests the sons of Aaron that means it appertains to them it's their job that are consecrated to burn incense go out of the sanctuary for thou hast trespassed 
neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. You're not going to be honored in what you just did. You just you just violated God's ordinances, God's rules, God's law. You have 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 gone into a place that doesn't belong to you, trying to do and, and lift yourself up as a um, a priest, as a man of God, and it's not your place. Verse number 19. Then Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priest, that means he got angry at them. The leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. We didn't see that back in 2 Kings. This is when he gets the leprosy. And it was because of his disobedience to God taking on something that didn't belong to him. But again, now th th this, this can happen to any one of us. Like I said, I talked about David. David uh, murdered. David committed adultery. Um, but God still let him have the kingdom and his descendants. See, we can offend God. But don't ever think that God is going to destroy you because of that. Don't ever think that that uh, a sin, a big sin in my life is going to bring me away from God. God, the Bible tells us that we, God has us in his hands and nobody can take us out of his hand. And so we've got to understand that God looks at our sin. And Jesus said, if somebody repents, he says, you forgive them every time, basically. He said 490 times in a day. Uh, but forgive them every time. And when when we offend God, that sin is forgiven. We could do the same thing as Uzziah. We can take upon ourselves the, the, a position or a, a job that's not ours. and it's, God has given it to somebody else. And uh, we can sin against God. But God doesn't necessarily, he's not going to necessarily afflict us with leprosy or cancer or anything else we are still his children disobedient yes he may bring chastening to bring us back into a proper fellowship with him but overall he's still going to say when we get to heaven because we are his children he's going to say well done thou good and faithful servant doesn't matter how big of sin you've committed how awful it may seem to other people. God is always there forgiving. He has forgiven. No matter what you're going to do. If you go out and murder somebody day after tomorrow. I don't know why not tomorrow. If you go out and murder somebody. You're still his child. You may, you may, if you murder somebody, you may even, in another state, you may have to be, uh, go to the death penalty. And you will pay for your sin on earth. But God will still accept you in heaven as his child. So Uzziah did these things. Verse 20, and Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out because the Lord had smitten him. Boy, can you imagine? Finding out you have leprosy because you sinned against God, what are you going to do about it? He just ran out of the out of the temple. There's nothing he can do about it. And and the Bible tells us he lived in a several house. Verse number 21. Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death and dwelt in a several house being a leper. Several house means a separate place. He lived by himself. He didn't have anybody in his house but him. Because if anybody else lived there, what was going to happen to him. They're going to get leprosy. So he lived by himself until he died. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house. Okay, it's for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. So Uzziah was still the king. But he couldn't go out in public and be the king to the people. So his son took over. And so we had it. it they don't call it two kings, but Jotham was the one who was 
taking care of the kingdom while Uzziah was still alive. And uh, uh, it, it's what he did was wrong. What he did was, in a sense, he followed the people of the land. He did right. But look at, go, go over to Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, this is the... Um, I would say the condition of, of the people during Uzziah's time. Isaiah 1, the spiritual condition. And look at verse number, I'll well, start at verse number 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So Uzziah and Jotham, that's a father and son. <clears throat> and then as the sons come along, Ahaz and Hezekiah, all. Uh, Isaiah had a long period of, of uh, ministry through these four kings. He says this, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Like I said, this is this is during the time of Uzziah. And God is saying, listen, I brought you up as children, as my own children. And what did you do? You rebelled against me. What did Samuel say to, to Saul? Rebellion is what? As the sin of witchcraft. And that's saying, I don't need God. I'll take care of it myself. You know, it's, it's, it's awful when we talk about... Um, giving yourself the power and the glory, we don't compare it to witchcraft. When we think of witchcraft, we think of Halloween and the witch with the pointed hat and the long nose with a wart and all that kind of stuff. Uh, witchcraft is just saying, I don't need God. I will take care of it. I will tell you, I will work it out for you even, uh, and you don't need God. Now that's taking the place of God, and that is evil. And so when we rebelled, they rebelled against God, they said, we don't need you. We can handle it. What did Uzziah do? I can handle this. He was, everything built up, and he says, and he was strong, and he kind of turned away from God. I believe he turned back to God after that, uh, he, when he ran out of the temple, knowing what God has done. But look what it, how, how it finishes here. As we look at this, and God says, I've nourished and brought up children. They rebelled against me. And now he's going to compare them to animals. Verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner. What, is, what does that mean? The ox is, has more brains than you do. You, you don't see me as the one who's taking care of you. But that dumb ox there, he recognizes his owner. And when, when that owner comes out... To get the feed, the ox can't get his own feed, so he goes right to the owner because he knows he's going to get fed. He knows who's taking care of him. But the people of Israel, people of Judah, forgot about God. They rebelled against God. They thought they could handle it. Even the ox knows he can't. Look, he goes on to say, and the ass his master's crib. See, he's comparing them and their way to an ox and to a donkey. You're no, I'm not talking to you, okay? This is what he's saying to them. You're dumber than a donkey because you've rebelled against the one who takes care of you, the one who gives you the power to get wealth. Verse 4, well, the middle of verse 3, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. He's not talking about just the northern kingdom. He's talking about all of Israel. They don't consider. They don't know. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. You know, God wants us to go forward. God wants us to go His way and His direction. But He says these people have turned around and just turned away from Him going away backwards that was Uzziah that's he was in that 
land at that time. And this is the way the people were. Even though he was a good king, it might be that he succumbed. What happened to Zechariah? Was Zechariah, did he die or what? Just like that other king, <laughs> Joash, who, who followed the high priest while he was alive. But when he died, he went his own way. He did wrong also. So Uzziah did things his way eventually when he was powerful, when he was strong. The reason for Uzziah's leprosy was because he turned away from God, said, I did it. I have it. I have that power. But God looks at him and he reminds us, even as he, he talks about him, he still did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord because he trusted God. You know, when we trust God, when we have faith, we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we are recognizing that God has provided for our salvation. We come to him by faith. We are to walk by faith, live by faith. And never take it upon ourselves to think, look what I've done. Paul says it in the New Testament. What do you have that you didn't receive? <laughs> if you think you've received it, you're wrong. You didn't, you weren't born with it. What did you have when you got it, came into this world? You know, the only thing you really had was a mom. Some people didn't even have that. Because mom died when they were born. But they came in with nothing. All of us did. And all of us are going to go out with nothing. So who gives us the ability to live this life in, in this life? God does. We are always to give him glory. Sometimes we allow pride to overcome, overtake our thinking. And we might not think about it, but it happens. As Uzziah, it happened to Uzziah, Nebuchadnezzar, Solomon. We've got to be beware of those things. Beware that we don't look at what we've accomplished and forget to give God the thanks and the glory for helping us, for meeting our needs. Uzziah was stricken with leprosy. That doesn't mean God's going to put leprosy on everybody that turns away from him. doesn't mean he's going to even punish. But we need to remember to always give God the glory for whatever comes in our lives. Never to take, it off, take the, uh, uh, the uh, glory on ourselves or give ourselves the a pat on the back for what we've accomplished. It's what God does. We need to give him glory. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the examples in Scripture. Lord, many times you have given us the examples of people and how they've lived, how they've followed you or turned from you. Lord, we, you, we know that... You give those to us for examples. Even Paul says, says it about the Old Testament. It's for us to recognize the way we should be or the way we shouldn't be. So, Lord, we should follow you and, and uh, uh, do as you say, as Uzziah did uh, before uh, he was strong. Lord, help us never to turn away. Help, help us always to give you glory for whatever we accomplish, because we know it's you who gives us the ability uh, to accomplish anything in this world. The Holy Spirit's power works through us to give us wisdom, give us uh, the abilities that we have. Thank you, Lord, uh, for your goodness to us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.